I'm Dr. Roger Pinesett, I'm the pre-med productivity expert, and I'm here with you live action. And we are talking about lessons from Cat Williams' interview with Shannon Sharp that he did this week. So I appreciate all you guys who are joining me here right now. But stop making excuses, stop whining, stop, right? Get at it. No excuses, just dominate. So going for Friday after next, right? Which is Money Mike, right? He played that pimp role and was one of the big breakout roles of his career. It's how I learned about Cat Williams. Shannon Sharp asked him, he said, listen, were you homeless when it came time for a Friday after next? And Cat Williams paused and he was like, and he did like kind of like a head nod. <laughs> That's interesting. And what he proceeded to explain was that he had a young son at that time. And he didn't have a lot of money. And he had a chain on his neck. And his son, he was holding his young son up. And his son was playing with the chain. And then dropped the chain. And it popped his front teeth out. And in addition to having his front teeth popped out, he had some bone issues and so forth. And so they told him it was going to be like tens of thousands of dollars to get this dental work. And so... He was like, ooh, the only check I got coming in is for this movie Friday After Next. And so he gave up his apartment and he was actually living in his trailer for the movie Friday After Next. He said it's because he knew that by doing this movie, he was gonna create opportunities. And so he couldn't pass up on that opportunity and he would do whatever was required to take advantage of that opportunity. And he talked about how he used to hold, it was his first movie. And so he would hold like, they would have like the readings with all the actors, but then he would hold readings for all the other first movie actors like Terry Crews and some other people. They would all come to his trailer and they would meet and they would go over their lines so that we could be sharp and be their best. And he says it shows in the final product of how good that movie was that we were working so hard together to get the job done. And I love that story because for many of us, right, we see the glitz and the glam and we see these actors and actresses out here. And you guys saw Taraji P. Henson in this week talking about how like she hasn't been getting paid, all those kind of things. It was wonderful to shine a light on the fact that, and I forget the exact quote my dad used to use, something about basically like the storm is darkest right before the light or something like that. It was something along those lines, I can't remember exactly. But the whole point is for many of us, and that's why I tell students, that any student can get into medical school, as long as you don't quit and you continue to get better. And this is like this story kind of highlights that in the sense that for many of us, the students who don't get there are the students who quit when it gets the hardest. But often that hardest is the opportunity that's the kick in the butt, the redirect you need to level up and get to your goal. For me, right, I was told that I would never get into medical school. My counselor tells me this and I had the opportunity to quit and switch majors and go to African American studies. I was like, no, I'm gonna stick with it, I'm gonna get it done. And from that dark moment, my greatness emerged. The rose from the concrete, right, grew out of that dark moment. And so it was cool because it's like, man, for many of us, I, it, it paralleled with me when I was studying for my MCAT. My MCAT studying wasn't going that great. <laughs> I wasn't focused, I was working at that time, doing some consulting stuff. And so I was busy and I was obsessed with that short-term money to keep myself afloat, right? Because I come from a background I didn't have a lot of money. So I was like, I need this money to keep my apartment, to keep things going. And then I recognized it was affecting my MCAT study. But I saw this MCAT as this life-changing opportunity for me that if I could just get this MCAT done and get into medical school, it's gonna change my entire life, it's gonna change my children's lives, it's gonna change everybody's lives, it's change everything. And so I saw the MCAT as this huge opportunity and so I sacrificed for it. I quit my job and then I moved in with my now wife, Shannon, and we moved to this place that was literally like the projects. It was awful, it was terrible. We lived out of an alley. And at one point where we were living there, the whole place flooded and then we had like no walls for the first two feet of our apartment. But while I'm studying for the MCAT, I'll never forget it. It was a night. I'm sitting there and I'm studying for the MCAT. It's late night. And I'm like, man, whew, man, I need a little break. I'm going to make some cheesy nachos in the microwave. So, right, get my chips, put my chips on the plate, get the cheese, put the cheese on there, pop it in the microwave to melt it. And then, right, you can't walk away from those. It's just too delicious, right? So you want to watch that cheese bubble and, and get all hot, right? So I'm watching the cheese. Like, ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. And all of a sudden, there's all this like like weird sparky sounds coming from the microwave and there's like a flutter of shimmeriness in the window of the microwave. I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? So I stopped the microwave and when I stopped the microwave and the door pops open, all of a sudden, all these roaches, baby roaches, that's what the shimmering was, these white roaches come running out of the microwave. Apparently they were nesting in this microwave and these roaches are everywhere now. Like, oh my gosh, I couldn't even eat the nachos and blah, blah. And I just went back and I sat down with this like little cheap brown wooden table in this little rinky dink freaking uh, kitchen with this microwave full of roaches. I sat down and I just took one of those. I just, whew, like I'm already like, this MCAT prep is freaking killing me. I don't have any money and I'm sitting in this apartment and now I got roaches and like, it, like one thing I don't deal with is bugs. And so all this is happening. It's like 11 o'clock at night. I'm just like sitting there and I'm just like slumped. I'm like, gosh, dang it. And I was like, I can't study anymore. And I went to sleep. Went upstairs, went to sleep. I'm like, oh my God, I can't be in this kitchen. And the next day I remember I came downstairs, took that microwave, I threw it out in the dumpster, and then I went right back to studying for this MCAT. Fast forward a couple months, got my 95th percentile MCAT score. I took that MCAT score, applied to medical school shortly thereafter, and then I got into Stanford Medical School and every other school I interviewed at. And it was just like parallel with this Cat Williams story is that for so many of us guys, we like to be successful, it, it takes a lot of sacrifice. And if you have big dreams and big goals, you're gonna have to sacrifice a lot of things. And for me, I sacrificed 
a whole bunch throughout my career. But that moment was like a sensible moment of like, does this really mean enough to you to really give it everything and to sacrifice and to sit here with roaches and a flooded mill dude? We had black mold eventually we found out in this apartment, like all this stuff. Does it mean enough to you to sacrifice all that stuff to create your future and your dream? And that's what I ask students. I'm like, man, I know everybody out here is suffering. I know it, right? Like Chappelle says, you suffer, I suffer, we all suffer. Are you willing to suffer through it to create your future? What does this three months of focused MCAT prep time mean to you? How would it change your life if you actually got the job done? How would your four years of undergrad, if you worked hard and got the grades you needed to get to medical school, how would it change your life? How would it alter and evolve your life? And I think that's what we have to look at and keep things in perspective and recognize there's a lot to be sad about, but if you're using that sadness and that struggle to create a brighter future, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's an opportunity. Is that okay? Did everybody learn today? Did everybody get something from this live stream? Do we feel good? Do we feel great? Do we feel outstanding? I feel outstanding. I feel great this morning. I feel good. I feel like when you get up and you have a productive day, oh man, like when you start that morning productively, it changes the whole outlook of the whole day. And this morning to get up here and give you guys what I think is a wonderful message and, and so many lessons from this interview makes me feel good. It's gonna make me have more fun today. My kids are about to go to a trampoline park right now. I'm about to blow my, my ACL out jumping on a <laughs> go jump on some trampolines, blow my knee out. Uh, but I appreciate you guys who joined me this morning. I hope that if this is your first time joining me, you'll take a second, right? I'm live on YouTube all the time. Take a second, like this video, take a second, subscribe to my channel, and then toggle the little bell so you always get notified whenever I'm live, it'll hit you up like, hey, Dr. Pythas live, give it a message that you might need, you don't know. Okay. I'm at Premed Productivity across social media. My website is premedproductivity.com. Go get into a course, y'all. Go get educated. And if you want a discount, like I said earlier, send me an email. It's Andre, A-N-D-R-E, at premedproductivity.com. You send me an email, I'll send you a discount, no questions asked, and we're, we're in business. And then you're getting better and getting to your stuff. I'm here every week bringing you guys great stuff. And I'm here every week for sure on my website coaching my students. Like we had TPT coaching this week for premeds. And then this upcoming week, we got MCAT coaching for my MCAT students. So if you're on my MCAT course, I want you to get the course. It's awesome. It's amazing. Power packed. And it's super cheap, super affordable but you also get to meet with me on a regular basis where we do high level MCAT stuff and we troubleshoot, hey, what are your issues? Let's look at your schedule. Oh, let's break down these passages. And we broke down a passage a couple weeks ago and we had so much fun doing it and learning about the, the intricacies of how we read and how we attack a question. Like we said, attacking and trying to hurt the exam so the exam doesn't hurt us. So yeah, so come get with me. I'm here and I'm on my website. So find me. I appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful week. Happy, happy new year to everybody. That's it for another episode of the Pre-Med Productivity Podcast. Show your love by smashing the like button and commenting in the box below. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses. No more complaining. You're going to take your future into your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better? Get to my website, premedproductivity.com. Grab a free ebook. Sign up for a free webinar. And if you're really ready to transform, enroll in one of my life-changing courses or coaching programs. You have greatness inside you. Let me show you how to unlock it so you can dominate and make your dreams a reality. No excuses, just dominate.